welcome back to Life of Steph. I am Steph and welcome to another Thanksgiving murder. So today we're going to be talking about the Byron David Smith killings. So let's just get right into it. So at this time, Smith was 64 years old and retired. He had retired from the US State Department. He was never married and he lived alone. So prior to all of this, he claimed that his house had been a target in the past and that it had been broken into at least six times over the past few months. He had only ever really reported one of these incidents and police did manage to find evidence of two incidents. So among some of the items that were stolen during these events were $4,000 in cash, his father's watch, coins from a collection, and a chainsaw. But because of these previous events, what Smith started doing was actually carrying a loaded gun on his holster even when inside his house. And he was even stashing bottled water and granola bars in his basement. And he also installed a security system in his home to protect himself. On November 22nd, 2012, Smith drove his vehicle down the road and parked it in front of his neighbors. And as he was visiting his neighbors, he said that he saw Haley Kiefer drive past his home and he actually suspected that it was her that was responsible for these break-ins. So he made a comment that he needed to go back home and that he needed to get ready for her. So he got back home, entered his house, turned on a recording device that he owned, moved the light bulbs from the lights on the ceiling and then sat in a chair and waited. As he waited, it wasn't actually Heidi that broke in. It was Nicholas Brady. He got in through the upstairs, broke a window, got in, and like the break in is actually, it can be heard on the recording that Smith had. Smith just waited. He waited 12 minutes in silence waiting for something else to happen. So 12 minutes go by and Nicholas then started to go down the stairs. As Nicholas was making his way into the basement, Smith shot him twice while he was going down the stairs and then once in the head after he had already fallen down the stairs. Wrapped up the body, moved it to another room, then he went upstairs, and then like 10 or 15 minutes later, he went back downstairs, reloaded his weapon, and then went back to sitting in his chair, just waiting. A few minutes later, Heidi did enter the home, and it could be heard that she was calling out for her cousin, Nicholas. So after she broke in, she started making her way down the stairs as well. And as she was making her way down the stairs, Smith shot Heidi as well. So obviously you've just been shot. She just, she falls down the stairs and it can be heard in the recordings that Smith says, oh, sorry about that. Followed by Heidi saying, oh my God. Then Smith shoots her again multiple times in the torso and it can be heard that Heidi is saying oh my god in between these shots and then she was also shot next to her left eye he repeatedly called her derogatory names then dragged her body into the other room where her cousin was and tossed her body on top of her cousins and shot her one more time under the chin which was the, the final shot. That, that shot's the one that actually killed her. All of this is on audio and video thanks to Smith's security system that he had set up. So the deaths were actually not reported to the police right away. Smith waited until the following day 
to report the incident and his excuse was that he didn't want to bother the police on Thanksgiving. You just shot and killed a 17 and 18 year old on Thanksgiving, but you don't want to bother the police. So Morrison County sheriffs did acknowledge that the teenagers were in fact there to break into his home and steal things. And Nicola's own sister actually claimed that Nicholas had stolen drugs from her on August 28th and that case was actually still ongoing at the time of the murders. And so the car that was being driven by Nicholas, it actually even contained evidence of a whole leather break-in from the night before that they were killed. So in Smith's statement, he described the fatal blows he delivered to the two teenagers. Both of them he shot in the head as they lay on the ground wounded. So in his statement, Smith actually claimed that Heidi had let out a laugh after he first shot her and said, if you're trying to shoot somebody and they laugh at you, you go again. So that was his reasoning for him repeatedly shooting Heidi. And like I mentioned, there's audio recordings and video recordings of this incident. And in what can be heard, at no point did Heidi laugh. All that was heard coming from her was a fear-filled, oh my God. Smith does acknowledge that he fired more shots than what was actually needed and that he fired a good clean finishing shot into Heidi's head. As most of you are familiar, homeowners are allowed to defend their home with lethal force. This is known as the castle doctrine. So this case really sparked a huge debate. Legal analysts pretty much said that the initial shootings would most likely have been justified under Minnesota's laws because of castle doctrine. However, when you continue to shoot somebody, that's no longer justified because any threat had already been removed. In the sheriff's own words, the law doesn't permit you to execute somebody once a threat is gone. Hamlin University School of Law professor said, I think the first shot is justified. After the person is no longer a threat because they're seriously wounded, the application of self-defense is over. So in addition to the surveillance system that Smith had, there was also a digital recorder that had six hours of audio of Smith. Prior to the break-in, it's heard on the recording where Smith clearly says, in your left eye. And then he made another comment stating, I realize I don't have an appointment, but I would like to see one of your lawyers here. The prosecution did make a note of the connection between the comment that is recorded on the audio and then him actually shooting Heidi in the left eye. And then including the comment of him pretty much knowing that he was going to soon need a lawyer. Can you say premeditated much? So after the shootings, Smith also made other statements like, I felt like I was cleaning up a mess, not like spilled food, not like vomit, not even like, not even like diarrhea the worst mess possible and I was stuck with it in some tiny little respect I was doing my civic duty if the law enforcement system couldn't handle it I had to do it I had to do it Smith's trial started on April 21st 2014 on April 29th he was found guilty on two counts of first-degree murder with premeditation and on two counts of second-degree murder 
and jury only took three hours to deliver the verdict. So we had his recorded statements, we had evidence that proved that this was pretty much planned, and then we had the excessive, way over the top shooting of the teenagers. But what really was the biggest influence on the jury was the audio recordings. So he was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Following his conviction, he did appeal. The Supreme Court maintained its original conviction. Then on November 2018, they filed another appeal and the federal district denied the request. Then on November 20th, 2020, there was another petition filed, which was denied March 22nd, 2021. Yeah, that was the Byron David Smith killings on Thanksgiving. Pretty crazy stuff. But thanks for watching, guys. If you have any suggestions or something that you'd like to know more about or just something you've heard, Go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Please be sure to like, subscribe, share, and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.